so uh, guys uh, welcome back let's continue with the next part right so tons of information guys i have given to you um, uh, let's add some more uh, new information over here right so what happened guys uh, we will see about how different team uh, work in uh, not which have different team i can say how one team uh with multiple different members right let's maybe tom one maybe uh eric multiple other persons work in one single project so we have a detailed discussion on this uh, maybe tomorrow class we will uh, discuss it further in very detail about the management of the project where multiple team or i can say multiple member of one team uh, gonna work in one project right uh, so what i'm talking about so this guy is also accessing one of the file in the project this guy is also accessing one of the file in this project okay and what we wanted to know uh, we wanted to know when tom change something in the file when i say change i normally here refer uh, commit so when tom uh, commit uh, something uh, in the project in one of the file same time maybe eric also commit so we should uh, we should have some way right through which we can check which part at which time which data on which file tom has committed or eric has committed so accordingly we can do some more uh, further decision on it right so it is good right uh, normally uh what can we do for example let's say this is the laptop uh, of one of my team member let's say the team member is vimal okay and vimal obviously sitting in his uh, laptop right so this is the vimal laptop tom has the own personal laptop and not laptop or system from which one individual guys work are also known as a workstation right so let's say this is the workstation of the vimal right so in my case let's say this is my windows and this is the workstation of my uh, of my of myself my 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 vimal right so what can we do because you know this we know i know i have to work on from my laptop and this laptop belongs to me so what i can do i can set one of my identity here okay identity something like this so when i as a vimal work in this laptop and when i do any commit in any of the files and projects so that commit already or automatically tagged with my name okay so what i mean by this uh, so when i do any commit you guys know the git logs command okay so when i do any commit okay we know how to add the comments plus in this commit my name and my email id automatically tagged so that will uh, that will help us in the future if somebody other team member also working in the same projects how they can do in the same project we will have a detailed discussion on this okay the team collaboration uh, we will have a discussion on it so when uh, other team also work in the same project and if anybody see uh, in this project they can very quickly say see that this is the time when vimal has committed something or adik has committed something so something like this so for this you have to do one setting initially in my case my laptop already have i had this setting okay so but in your laptop you will install if you install git first time this setting is not there so i'm going to show you how we can do this setting and without this setting if you try to commit the commit might give the warning or they might fail so this is one time setup you have to do in your laptop uh, to to set your identity uh so as you commit from a laptop automatic your identity as author will be set so in my case it is already there but how can you set also i am going to give this command to you so command is git i am going to set something or it's called config something that in my laptop any of the project i am going to work so for example this is the one of the project or the workspace so technically guys workspace you can think also as a project so in my in my normal discussion if i use the word project or if i use the word uh, workspace it is the same thing so in my laptop any of the git project or any project i want to work and anywhere i want to use git 
I want to set my name and my email address. So I would like to do a global setting for all the projects. Okay. Where I want to set my name or the username. This is the syntax we use user dot name. It will be Vimal Dago. This is my full name. So this setting has been added. I would add one more setting here in all the projects globally in my this laptop only. Okay, my email address also to be set. So whatever email address you guys want to add, you can add. For example, example, this is one of my uh, official email ID I am I'm setting here. So that's all, guys. This is one time setup, and the global means here. Okay, any of the projects you go in this laptop and you use the git command, this name as author and email ID as author will be set automatically in your final uh, uh, final version or in your final commit. Is like this. Or you want to check the config finally. So you can see uh, config. Can you show me all the global settings what I have done in my laptop? So you can list with L option. <coughs> so <clears throat> if you list this, so in my laptop, all the settings I've done previously, it will show the entire list to me. So you can see email address and the name come up. In my laptop, I've done some more settings. In your laptop, it might not be there. But whenever we need, for example, when I go for merging tool or difference tool, I, I'll show you in my future classes how we can do for the settings. So right now we don't require, but I'll show you how to do the setting in the future, right? But right now we can go for this student setting. If you don't do the setting uh, and you try to do commit, your commit might warning or they might fail. That's what it is a compulsory right now to perform this setting, right? That's all. So this is one thing uh, we have uh, uh, done here. Now let me do one quick thing. Uh, this project, guys, we have worked on. Let me go out from this project. You can use the double dot. You go to the main other folder with this project created. Let me create one more workspace, or let me create one more project. Okay. So there's one more way to do this. Either you can create from some folder first, then go inside and do do git in it you can do in this way also you can use git init command and let's say this is my second project so one command will do two things automatic this folder will create it you don't have to create it by yourself and automatic in this folder your git will be initialized okay so two things will automate done by one single command you don't have to do one by one so this folder is initialized with git how can i verify you can use git status command if git status command work there's no error come up Okay, it means your project has been initialized. Now, what the plan, right? Very interesting thing we are going to do uh, uh, right now. Uh, what I want to do uh, rollbacks, I want to go reverse and forward, uh, some kind of this setting I would like to show you. Okay, so for this, in this project, I know I have no file. Let me create multiple files. One file would be uh, my dot uh, png uh, in my image file. One file would be hello or h dot uh, mp four. Uh, one file may be hi dot txt. One file may be uh, hello dot python. So multiple files are created. This file I directly created in my hard disk in my working directory. So git is there. So git says none of this file has been tracked. So if you do any changes, I want help. That's what guys, I explain you already, right? So that is called untracked file. Okay. Now, now it is your choice, which file you want to track. I show you, I told you how to uh, do this. I know I'm into my working area, working space. Okay. So I want to only track these two files. Okay. Let me, I want to track only hello.py. Okay, this two file I want to track. So this file has been added in the in the uh, staging area. But one thing is, in maybe right now I have I have no plan to track these three files. Okay, I have no plan, but it is there in my project because my project requires some text file. The text file maybe contains some kind of data set for some analysis, some images, and some video. It is there in my project because this is my company website maybe. Or mobile app maybe but i don't want to track these files 
Okay, so for this, Git has a capability they give you because otherwise, when you run the status command, they keep on giving this red color screen. They normally bother a lot. So, so my point here is, I need this file, but I don't want Git will track or give Git will give any kind of this kind of warning. Okay, so for this, Git has a capability. What you can do in your current uh, in your current uh, uh what is this in your current uh project or the working area you can create one file okay file with the extension dot okay that's called and name is called git ignore ignore so this is a special kind of file ignore and because the file name is start with uh, with dot so normally guys in linux or linux shell any file start with git these are the hidden files you know visible here in order to see any hidden file, there's an option called A. A may say, show me all the files. So this file also visible. But duty and the beauty of this file is whenever you run any git command or special git status command, git status command, okay, they always check this file and they check in this file and they, they try to find do you have to ignore any file? Do you have to use any file in the git for some further, further purpose? Right? For example, I want to ignore file h.mp4. So what I can do, I'll open this file. So I'm using vi editor, guys. Uh, this is the one text editor in Linux. If you don't know how to use vi, you can use any other editor also like notepad. Or, uh, or if you don't know, these are these basic command of Linux, like ls command or vi command. You can go uh, see my uh, Linux basic command video. We have already uploaded in your uh, learning portal. Uh, uh, I think you everybody has the access of it. I'm using vi. I use i to insert, and I say here any file that name is h dot mp four. Neglect this means ignore it. Okay, then the project, but don't work anything on this file. So just give the file name. That's all. That's what we have to do. Call in wq and save it. Okay. Now this is the content of this file. Now in this time, now if we try to run the git start command, we can see this file has been ignored. Okay, which one? Uh, as you mp4 has been ignored. Okay. Similarly, if you want to ignore other files also, like mpng or txt, right? So again, open this file, and maybe there might be multiple uh, uh, png files. So you can write start or png. So all the file with png, all the file with txt. Or maybe you can also write a star here. So you don't have to give every individual name. Uh, everything will be uh, ignored. Okay. Now, if you run the git stress command, now all the files has been ignored. But because we have created one more new file, so this file we can add into our uh, commit area. Okay. So this file we can add because this is a file is contains some information which file to ignore. So git ignore, I'm adding and plus I'm also committing this file. Commit this file, putting in my commit area uh, with comment, adding git ignore. Guys, giving a proper comment is very important. Otherwise, right now for practicing, you give anything, but in the real world, if you don't give proper comments name, it's very hard to understand at what at this point in time what we have added. So adding git ignore file. That's all. Okay. So uh, finally. Finally, if you run the git status command, even though in the workspace there's a lot of files, but because of the git ignore, because of this file, okay, because of the content of this file, we are asking git not to focus on any file with this extensions, right? Only our focus area would be any other files, in my case, is py. Okay, that is one small thing I want to tell you, okay? But if you run the git status command, this file is still in my staging area if you think it's time to commit if you want let's say let me check the content of this file is empty but if you want if you want to commit this file you can commit it how get commit with your file name and you need to give the comment but if you don't give the comment commit won't work either they give the error or they will open automatically your by default text editor okay so if i hit enter in my case, my barefoot text is a notepad plus plus, maybe in your case, a notepad or GEdit or VI 
whatever whatever would be your text editor they open for you and here they say do you have to pass your commit message here and so my commit message i can write here uh, this is first time i save uh, save hello.py okay something like this just save this right type this message save the file control s close it so this is also one of the way to give the message but it's, it's look very tedious so that is a reason we always give the command with m option but there's two way you can put it. now if you see the git status this message say my working area is clean clean nothing to do there we have multiple files either this file is ignored or this file is there in the commit area but everything is clean this message say okay whatever you want to commit or uh, you guys have done Anyways, you can run the get log command and you can see there's a two time we have committed one for the ignore file that normally we commit initially and this second time we are committed okay and better i can use a one line to see the main information here. okay now it's time what i'm going to do here i want to show you guys one more small thing very interesting thing if you want to check how many files you have in your uh working area a simple ls command you can check okay you want to check how many file you have in your staging area you can use list file command okay so there's two files we have in the staging area okay similarly if you want to check how many file you have in your commit area so git show command only showing you the last file we added in the commit area last change right for example i did change two times this one i added one file this time i added one file so the last one or last version or last commit that is linked to had also they show you but this file they show you but i added other files also so if your requirement if your requirement to see all the file in the in the commit area this is for the staging area but you want to see all the file in the commit area something is very useful right uh, something very useful i can say so there's one command called git show in the show command okay i am looking for uh, the name only okay name only of all the files okay so they give you this name hello.py uh, but here I would like to check the entire tree. Technically, this is the last one again they're showing you. So there's a one other command. Let me use that command. So in the git, there's a command called list tree. So this command has a capability to show you all the file in the commit area. So this command is giving a warning because here you have to give uh, the information of your tree. Tree, I will explain you in my next discussion in very detail right but here they're talking about uh we have multiple comments and obviously this is the last one we added so till till here all the file that you added i want to show the details so i can write here i'm i want to show everything till here because you guys know you might have commit hundreds of times but last commit there's some name that name is uh has been also give the name had so just show me all the detail till this commit or till this version. Okay, so here guys, they give you the name of the file. So this is one of the way, there's some other commands also available, but this is one of the best way. If you want to check all the file that is available in your commit area, these are two files because we added, they show you here. Okay, this is one thing. Plus, they show you some other information also. What is the information maybe useful? We will see in the future. But right now, I want to only see the name only, not other details here. Okay, so they, we can pass one option called name only. Okay, now here they're going to give you the name of the file that I added in the commit area. So this is a good, good command, sometimes very useful. I want to check all the file in my commit area. So I told you guys there's three different areas. Okay, one is the working area, also known as work in progress. Command for this is ls. These are the files. 
Then we have a staging area. Let me write S A. The command for this guy is git list files. Okay. And after this, we have to put the file in the commit area. Let me just see a command for this is this one. This is a file uh, you can uh, use. Okay. But any file in the working area, if you want to remove, you can use simple Linux command like rm. I can use rm command to remove because this file is there in my hard disk. I can actually store from my hard disk rm basic Linux commands you can use. It removed. Okay, but but if you have a, this kind of requirement, any file you have in the staging area, okay, that has been tracked, and that file you want to untrack, untrack. So this command I already given to you guys. You know, there's a uh, restore command uh, I I given to you. Okay, how to untrack one particular file? So that uh, restore command I show you today, you can use, but but if you have any file, let's say in my case, we have one file, uh, one file in my commit area is called hello.py. Okay, so hello.py file is been is there in my commit area, means we have a backup copy of it, means we have version of it, means we have a snapshot of this. Okay, how to add in the commit area with a commit command, you guys know. But, but if you want to remove this file from the commit area okay how can you do this how can you remove a file from the commit area so guys take this as a small homework tomorrow i give this answer to you but if you want just try by yourself as a homework how can you reuse or remove particular file okay from your uh, from your commit area okay how we can do this or uh, in the commit area, it's not only one single file. We have version v1, v2, v3. Maybe have a requirement. I don't want to remove this entire file, but I want to remove uh, last two version of this file. I want to keep the only one single version in my commit area. A lot of use case, uh, you know, related to this, right? Because commit area is very, very critical. When I start explaining you about distributed version control system, when I start integrating with multiple branches, or you guys might might integrate this get to any CI CD tool like Jenkins. Uh, you want to upload this repository in the public repository like GitHub. Uh, so commit area is the one who decide what data you want to send. So this discussion is not yet done. Very critical disc discussion we might discuss in tomorrow class. So having a pro pure control in the commit area is very critical. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so maybe we put a lot of data in the commit area, but I don't want to share everything to everyone, right? So we should have a way to, to remove something or add something. Adding is you, we know commit, but how to remove particular part that you guys take as a homework. Okay, so otherwise I'll show you in the tomorrow class how we can do it. Okay, so these are once more homework I want to give right now. So next practical that I want to show you is this part so right now we have one uh, let's focus on this file only hello.py so we have this file in my commit area okay if you talk about my status of the tree uh one minute the state of my tree is clean nothing to do any changes but if i add something in my file hello.py let me add the first line let me add the code my guest status say something has been modified Okay, you have to put first into the staging area and we could get add. I added this thing. Then they say, now this part is file is modified. You have to put in the commit area. So I say git commit this file name with some comment added line in hello file. Okay, and everything is clean. Nothing we have to worry. Everything is clean. With whatever data you have in your working area, same data has been synced with your backup or the snapshots. That's what this guy is talking about. Okay, now if you see the logs, one more commit has been created. Now, whatever plan is, let me add two or three. I want to show you how we can do reverse and forward. Something like this, I would like to show you. So let me add a second line. Okay, and do the same thing, git add. 
and uh, commit. But because that this file is already uh, been uh, committed once, so next time if you want directly this file to be uh, to be put in the commit area, okay. So this time you don't have to use add again and again, okay. If you want just to put only in the staging area, you can put add. But finally, after staging area, you want to put this file in the commit area. You don't have to use add again and again. Okay, you have to use only when initially once, right? Then in the future, you can keep on using commit. That's all. So this will one step will be saved, and you can say second line edit. Okay. So if you run the status command, you guys, everything is clean. Okay, and you finally one more uh, one more commit has been done. And let me do one more time why I'm doing this. You guys understand in a minute. Okay. I'm doing one more time. Let's say there's a third line. I'm adding control D to close the file. And uh, this is the third line. I'm adding one more time. Let me do so again. We do, do some more good practical. Bye bye. All right. And one more time. I'm doing, let's say, bye. Bye. Commit. Okay, so technically this file, uh, if you just try to understand in this way, this file uh, we have uh, created, okay, we have created version one, then version two, then version three, then version four. This is the last version. The, every version has an ID, there's a commit ID, and they have also a name called hat. Okay, and this version, has some data, Ceramic version data version has other data, this version has other data, this was other data. That one so I explained to you. Okay, so initially whatever data you had is stored here. Anything you change, a delta part is stored here. Anything you change, then delta part is stored here. Anything you delete or add, delta part is stored here. <clears throat> so anybody try to read this data at this point in time, they will see the entire data. This concept I explained you guys today. Okay. But point here is what I'm trying to show you here is, so if we're on the logs, uh, one line, so these are multiple versions we have, okay? Uh, now, uh, what I want to show you here is, right? Let's say, let's say whatever data you have in this file, okay? In, in this, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me just draw this diagram here. Uh, in this way, format. So right now, there's a two different stories. Okay, one storage is these. This is a storage. Story means this data is stored in your hard disk. This is called storage. Where in your commit area, separate separate location altogether. And so one storage in this file that is again there in the storage, but it's stored in the separate storage altogether. As such. There's no link of this storage of this storage. Okay. But this storage you guys know is known as a work in progress or working area. And this story, you know, is a commit area. Okay. So what I'm talking about right now in my working area or working space. Okay. We have this data and this is the latest update data, uh, been added by our developers. But they might be something after we added, they might be something uh, not working properly. We have some code failure, but we know last day or last day, last version, everything working fine. Or last to last version, everything working fine. So how can we do rollback? Okay, technically what I want to do, all right, what our data till here is same thing because we have already committed. Because the data that is there here, is same as this one. Why? Because recently we committed, my Git status is updated, clean. It means whatever data I have in my this file, exactly same data we have in my commit area. So data till here is same as this one. But data that I had at this point in time, or this point in time, or this point in time is very different. So my requirement is, my requirement is I would like to go at this point in time, even though if I, if I show you with a time perspective, okay, I want to see what data I had at this point in time, this date or this date. 
Okay, so I want to go back. It is called rollback. Okay, one reason is I want to see my code at that point in time. It's not about code. You can use for other purpose also for document also and other thing also. So how we can do? So there's a concept guys called uh, reset. Okay, very very powerful concept. We will discuss in this concept very detail. So this is one concept called reset. Okay, so we can do the resetting things, and there's three different kind of resets, right? One is a hard reset, one is soft reset, one is mixed. So this concept I'll take in very detail. Very interesting. The different different use case, different different reset we are going to use. Okay. Uh, but tomorrow class, today I'm just showing you a very quick demonstration, right? What I mean by this, okay. In my commit area, my data last commit is is linked to the head, or I can say pointed to the head, okay. But I what I want, I want to go in my commit area to version two and say whatever data you have at this point in time, I want this data you have to give me back, where. To my work in progress area. Okay. My, what I mean by this, I would like to go to to my commit area. This is a commit area, guys, and say commit area. This is the time. Okay. Let me copy and paste. We have some data in my file. Okay. Which file? This file. Okay. I have. I want to go to this point in time, okay, and want to have my uh, whatever data you have here. I want to take it back. So for this, I say Git. I want to reset something. Now there's one message come up, reset, and run the Git logs command. Thing is is same. There is no change. But what this guy has done, okay, they updated your staging area and now staging area is pointing to this time or this commit id okay which one 712 this commit id okay what happened till now nothing nothing happened right if you run the cat your file everything is same but internally you have set if you run the git status command internally you have set in your staging area that in this file we are pointing to this version okay this version now because your staging area now we are pointing to this version now okay what can we do what are data we had at this point in time we can take back in our working area okay working area so technically i'm just going backward roll back kind of thing. and for this there's one command called checkout. I want to check out this file. Okay. So this file. So the updated one. Now what happened now if you're on the cat command, you can see guys now two lines come up, right? Technically in my current project, this file contain four lines. I show you already. But as soon as I check out, they take me back where at this point in time. Why here? Because we have done some reset. Intel guys here, they're using mixed reset, but don't worry, we have a detailed discussion on this. So don't guys bother about this term right now. All the reset will do something for you. Different, different scenario video use different one. Right now, the example I just I'm showing you is a mixed reset. What is this also? We will discuss tomorrow. Uh, but I just wanted to show you, okay? What is the use of the versioning, right? Because we have the version, any point in time, we can go back at any point in time. And whatever data you had at this point in time, we can take it back to the working area. So this is my commit area. And from the commit area, I can take my data back to my work in progress or working area, okay, of any of the versions. So at this time, we had two lines. So you guys see here, two lines uh, come up. Or maybe you want to again go forward. You want to go for uh, V3. So it's pretty simple. You should know the V3, uh, V3 one line. So this may be your uh, V3 or maybe this one will be V3. So 
what can you do again you can reset say i want to go to at this point in time okay which one this one or there is one more way to do because you know guys the current data is linking to had either you can give had okay you guys i explain you by the had uh, is the end is number 0 and if you want to go for second last change you could go for one third last change fourth last change you also use this one also so either i to go uh, you know finding the id and type by myself i say i know i want to do a roll back or i want to go for second last change okay i can write one here so again i do reset and i do what our data we have at this point in time i want to do check out okay now your data will come to your Working lines here, three lines, or maybe I have to do reset again. I want to go for fourth last change, third last change, go fourth last change. At this time, I again let me check out. That point in time, I have my head one line. Okay, I see this is what data we have. If you want to do some changes? You can do it. Read the content, or if you want to just go again to the last change you have done zero. I will write in this way or this way. Same thing. Again, the check out. You will get the latest updated data. What you have, you know, latest updated data. So there's one of the cool feature. Otherwise, multiple different scenarios, multiple different kind of uh, reset uh, we might have to use. This is one topic. Uh, I will show you in more detail in my tomorrow uh, class. But this is a way, guys. How can you roll back, go back, and forward, uh, and see other data? And and if you see this uh, this uh, information. in uh graph uh, gui that most more interesting right for example this is my folder let me go to my uh, graphical means my gui okay so what i mean by this let me go to my this system windows we melted uh, daga and we have created a folder called git training something let me go to this folder this is my uh, two projects we created right now i'm into this project called second project this is a file we had and right now in this file this is my working area in this file if i open this is the four lines we have but as soon as i uh, do uh, i go back last uh, second last or third last change and check out okay in the same working area with content we updated okay So if I open this file again, let me close. When I open this file again, you will see all the two lines come up on the file. Same location. You just your your file is been data be updated. Okay. So you can see why this kind of visuals also I what I'm talking about. Right. Again, again you go to zero. You will check out again your part of the latest updated data come up to you. Right. so because this is possible because we have a versioning right otherwise otherwise it won't work the way it should work that's what i'm talking about okay so this is also reset uh, because of versioning is happening but we have a detailed discussion on it and again i told you in the uh, next class okay one more small information i would like to tell you here is go in git you will see slowly there will be a lot of commands the command become very bigger tag lock command and lock command we use one of the option right so you don't have to memorize the options mostly the commands come with the help okay you can have an h you can use help to see some other options the support sometimes you can use the help with help command okay so every option have a different with help or may sometimes they use help command to to open that particular document right so they open this document over here and here they show you multiple different helps okay all the different options that uh, that get logs provide plus also good good options here for example and plus also they give you what option they, they can write for example one of the option that we are using here is uh, you know this one uh, was what one line so you can find one line option plus they have more options right depend upon the use case so they have pay powerful let me search for one line yeah so this is one line option they have that why you use right but depend upon requirement we keep on coming to this document right this is what we are using okay uh, to reuse more options so use 
there is no meaning to memorize the um, option side as and when we require just come to this help and this document and uh, and look for the options and add it but you will see guys slowly as we go more deep into the gate we have just started the first day okay so this is one option we added but you have to yeah, write more options like graph and all and decorate and much more options we keep on uh, picking from here for different different purpose and the command become very bigger and that is a command we have to use always rather than you typing this big command again and again that you, we use very frequently we can give this command a nickname and the nickname guys is called alias and how we can say create the alias so we can tell my git git in my because this is for you right everybody has a different name so example i want to give this command a nickname called my frequently used command or my history because they, they are the one who give the history of the logs so you can give your own nickname something like this okay and because this nickname you are giving for your own laptop so anything that you set up by yourself for your own workstation you can use git config command so i'm setting in my laptop and this setting i'm doing globally globally means in my laptop i might have multiple uh, project so i'm setting this thing globally okay and what i'm going to set i want to set this command nickname that's all you just put this command into double quotes the nickname of this command is called my hist and because this is a nickname the nickname is also known as alias so this is one keyword you have to use a l i s alias and let me give an alias called hist you can give any name okay and i don't have to use the git command here because git command obviously we use you have to use the for the options of the git so this is the final command you can use so what is benefit of this command is the command is now onward you don't have to use this 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 entire big command instead you write this command you can use git hist also it will give the same output hist command is not the part of git but this command and this option we have created this called alias so whenever you run this command behind the scene they run this command okay so right, right now this is this is very simple command but in the future there will be a lot of big command that get used very frequently in the git so okay having the aliases is always a great choice to have and even, even though we can config global okay and we can check the list or the things we have created so this is the one alias i created in my system you can create more with the different different name also okay so there's a one small thing i would like to uh, uh, to uh, show you otherwise there's small small things i'm just showing you right now then we will move guys to the branching and when we move to branch then the main fun part of the git start even though if you talk about the git we just search for the git so we search for the git okay so it is a uh, fully version control system what is version control i explain to you because we have versioning we can go back and reverse that what i showed to you but git is not only version control they are distributed very powerful feature git has uh, distributed and centralized both the thing get support so my tomorrow class i will talk about centralized next class i will talk about distributed we can create our own local setup in multiple machines uh, i'll tell you how and then i show you the power of the git distribution part right so we'll talk about it but yeah version control as least we got the idea vcs to that help you to handle the project to quickly roll back and some other things right and if you see very quickly the wikipedia of the git the one of the power, core part of the uh, git is the tracking changes <clears throat> so any file that you change the track and this is because of your staging area i explained to you they do these changes right but git is has a lot of more features of collaborating with the team and other other facilities as again we focus in this course i will explain to you to today first day i am just trying to give you some vocabulary concepts so next classes when we go more deep into the git uh, so You, if you guys familiar about these terms, what we discussed today, commit area and staging or head, so thing would be very simpler for you. 
one more small information i just want to share with you uh, git is also been is actually developed by linus torvalds this is the same guy uh, who created linux so i think everybody know linux and the godfather and the creator of linux is linux torvald the same guy is the one who created a git just for your knowledge uh, those who by chance uh, doesn't know one more information i want to tell you guys i was lucky because for uh, anybody who are from the open source guys uh, and linux guys if you are here uh, this is the guy who everybody dream of to 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 be sometime get a chance to meet with linux tower so i was lucky i got a chance to stay uh, invest some time with linux tower i think in la los angeles i was there to spend some time had a great talk uh with uh next towel share a lot of informations also get a lot of uh, insight about how the thing work i'm lucky so uh, as my profile i i always uh, always try to meet with multiple different creators of the technology from docker like linux solomon hikes so even though if you see my linkedin profile so you will find me with other creators uh of the technology maybe you can find i might have posted this is the solomon high creator of docker creator of core uh, core os uh likewise right so just just i'm just giving this information uh, means nothing technically so 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 that is one of the reason uh, i just trying to uh, you know get a way to uh, to uh, you know he's a ceo of open stack right and uh, this is the uh, from linux founders director yeah this is the jim right so i was with him for some time got a chance to meet and uh, get a lot of information right about linux and uh, especially linux i can say but the guy behind the git is also linux towel just to give you a value of this product because linux towel is the linux towel right so this is one small information i just want to tell you now otherwise uh, there is some more small small things uh, we can do right uh, to uh, to uh, for example in the git okay this is a file let me quick, quickly create one more project so i can show you some small things very quickly so let's say this is my uh, new project number 1 okay we created and in this project let me create multiple file a b c d four files we have created my plan is to add all the files so we can do very quickly add dot when i add dot all the file that is there they are it all the file go to a staging area okay so dot is a way to attach all the file but only those file that is untracked and only those file untracked that is not there in the get ignore so the, i have no get ignore here so all the files are untracked and all the file that are untracked dot will add in the one single go all the file in the staging area now from the staging area uh, if you want to commit particular file you can give the file name or you want to commit all the file one go you can use dot again and give some command let's say first commit so in one single go all the file also being uh, committed okay so that is again one of the reason why we have a staging area because because mostly mostly this is a very common command that is there in a practice dot dot okay but in our project not all the file i want to uh, add, commit at one go okay what i mean by this if i go and create one more new git project let's say new project number 2 okay so maybe i might have multi file touch a b and c and d multiple file but i don't want to commit all the files but i want to use dot because i have hundreds of file i can't do man manual one by one so what i can do at the of adding i'm going to add only a and b but as a c also three file added in my commit area this is not and interesting thing is why uh, so i put in the staging area interesting thing because i put in the staging area the staging area now i can run git commit command dot with some command let's say ff something 
So one commit command do, even though you have four files, but one of the files available in staging area, they commit in one. So dot is a very common practice we do. Okay, but but to control the dot, we can again use staging area. This again, one of the reason, uh, one of the benefit also of the staging area. So all the file that is in the staging area, they pick and they put in the commit. Okay. So now onward, you will see very frequently, not in the real world also, you will see very frequently we use dot uh, to quickly put everything in the in the uh, uh, commit area. Okay. But now if you do some changes in the A file, let me put something. Uh, let's say you do some change in the B file. Okay, something it changes, we have a tracking. So they say two file has been modified. Okay, so normally we have modified. So what first we put in the staging area, then we put in the uh, commit area. Okay, so what can we do? We can use commit. Directly we can comment with, so let's say new added, new, and we can write dot. All the file directly go to commit area, or even though we can also use one more option called A. A means, is, is a way to do a express or quickly commit. So A will also do, if you write A, if you don't write A, it's the same thing I can say, but normally you can see this option a lot in the market. A means all the file that is already be added initially in the commit area, but if something may change. So first add these things in the staging area, then put in the commit area in one single command. Okay. It doesn't make any sense here. Why not making sense? Maybe uh, because some of the version they support hyper A, but let me use without A also. But this A is also one of the options. In maybe in this version they might not working properly, or mostly they work in single file also. But, but I'm trying to tell you guys if this option or if you don't use option, the same thing is a express uh, commit. So giving you small small options. And that is very much usable in the market and that you see very frequently. That's what I'm, I'm just giving you a very quickly. Here. Okay. One more small thing. Um, uh, if you want, let's say in the Git, okay, we have some files. ABC is there. Okay. And uh, my requirement is to remove the file. Okay. Remove the file from all the areas, okay? Guys, the homework that I have given to is different, right? My homework that I given to you is uh, how to remove the file from the commit area only. I want to keep my file in my staging area and the working area, but I want to remove my file from the commit area. This was the homework I had given to you that you have to try by yourself. I'll show you the answer tomorrow, okay? But right now here, my requirement is I have file A, B, C, okay? This two files, or let's say file number A, I want to remove from all the areas, from my, uh, from my working area also, staging area also, and my commit area also in one go. So in the Git, we have a command called Git remove A. That's all. So this command will remove this file from all the areas. From here also, even though guys, you see, won't see anything here, the math are deleted. So this file has been removed from all the areas this is one thing but you want to remove all the file from all the areas like commit and working areas okay so then all the files so then rm r you can use and the dot r means recursively they remove all the file we have only two file left b and c they remove it from here also plus if you try to see the files from staging area also they remove or i show you the command guys you can check the file uh, from uh, you know this command I show you get list tree uh, name only head okay it is there but technically they internally they this might be one marker but technically data has been removed so they might be showing you here in the tree but they are actually removed from the uh, this area so if you want to remove all the file this is the command you can use that's what I'm talking about from all the areas. And if you see here, there's one marker, there's this put that is there, it's been deleted. Okay. 
but after you uh, delete the file okay after you delete the file you can update your commit area that's what the marker is coming so updating uh, you can again do uh, you know there's a command called git add update okay this is what you can do so even though there's nothing changed come up but but you can do git commit just normal commit to update that something has been deleted so then this marker will go okay for maybe some time let me check one more command a this might update it is rename by the rename come up c has been renamed to t i haven't done this oh, one minute let me comment commit with some options some name some comments so now this marker has been updated in the commit area now it's been clear so after delete they only do the marker because we have deleted some file right the file has been deleted so just update by commit I means something have changed just update this but my point simple is if you want to delete file from all the locations you can use git uh, rm command to delete and remove so these are the some basics commonly used operations you can use in the git to perform this all this guys history i will share to you 